Now we're going to do the second question. Uh, you buy a share for 1098 and sell it for 12 in two years. All of their projections are true. What's your internal rate of return? All right, let's do the same setup here. Let's drop down a little bit. Okay, so we spend 1098 right now and we sell for 12. Minus 1098. We're going to sell for 12. We have dividends of 25 and 27 cents, so 0.25, and I'm going to make this 12.27 because we're going to get $12 from the sale and 27 cents from the dividend. And so these are the cash flows. Let's assume some R rate of return. To differentiate it from above, I'm just going to say 10%. And then we just need to get the present value of the cash flows. Notice we have no cash flows for year three because we sold the stock. Let me make this a little lighter. And therefore the NPV is just the sum of these. Now we could certainly guess and check to get the IRR, but otherwise we're just going to set the NPV equal to zero by changing the discount rate. And we have 6.85%. Let me change that to percent. So this is the answer for this one, and the solution is that um, a 6.85% rate of return would give us a, an NPV of zero for this. So that's the IRR for this problem. Um, let me go ahead and talk about this one, and then I'll work the other one as a separate equation or a separate uh, video. The cost of equity is, okay, so somebody asked questions about this during office hours. Um, it says in here, the cost of equity for Wendy's is estimated at 9% per year. Uh, the question was, what is uh, cost of equity in the sense that, like, how do we know that that's the discount rate? Well, the cost of equity is how much I require to be paid for um, this particular company or for their stock. And so the cost of equity is our discount rate because that is what we would charge this company in order to buy their stock. Um, it's not, I don't know, I guess it's intuitive. I don't, I'm not sure how to think about it, but the point is we use 9% as the discount rate when we do the, the stock uh, discounting. Here, we have a yield to maturity of 5% on the debt. Having a yield to maturity of 5% on the debt is the cost of debt, and they're different. Uh, this is 9%, this is 5%, there's a 4% difference. And the reason for that is that if I am uh, a debt holder, I'm first in line. It's built into the contract. I'm the first one to get paid if the company goes bankrupt. The equity holders are the last ones to get paid, but they also have a lot of upside. So um, let's say that a company went bankrupt and debt holders were owed $100 or something like that. Uh, that would never happen, but $100. If the company has more than $100 when it goes bankrupt, then the equity holders, well, not even when it goes bankrupt, once I pay the equity holders their $100, as the equity holder, I get to keep as much of the upside as I want. Uh, and so, well, the rest of the upside. And so if a company does really well, uh, then the equity holders do a lot better. And so there's a lot more risk because if things go bad, then the equity holders are last in line and they may not get paid. If things go really well, they get to keep all the money. So the answer here, what it, why is the cost of equity higher than the yield to maturity on debt? Well, the answer is um, that equity holders are residual claimants. And so by residual claimant, what we mean is they're last in line. And so therefore, if they go bankrupt, if the company goes bankrupt, they may not get any money. If they do really well, they get a lot of money. And so there's a lot more risk baked in. Um, this one, we haven't even talked about institutional ownership, so, um, but let's say investors in stocks misestimate risk because of low institutional ownership. Um, that's not true. Investors in stocks should have a good count of all the risk that's happening in the market. Payoffs to debt holders are not guaranteed, so a company could easily go bankrupt and debt holders and equity holders get nothing. Um, and then finally, uh, debt holders, they could in theory, well, it's, it's unclear to me how this would be a hedge. So they can certainly buy shares, but let's say that we thought that Wendy was, Wendy's was risky. 
If you were a debt holder, would you want to buy their equity? No, you'd be last in line for that. So the only answer that makes sense on this is A.